Hey everybody, it's David Levitt with Being Health, and I have with me Dr. Henry Wright, president and founder of Being Health. Ooh. So, uh, what we're going to do, Dr. Wright, is we're just going to go through some of the most common autoimmune diseases out there oh. that people deal with. Obviously, there's what is it 85 or 80, I think 85 or 87 85 or 80 uh, yeah. different autoimmune disorders mm -hmm. and um, that's quite a few it is and obviously we won't have time to discuss every single one in detail and you, you know what's really interesting behind all autoimmune diseases when you get into the medical science there is a statement that is made incurable mm -hmm. I have to tell you there is no such thing as incurable in the kingdom of God. Right. So we see many autoimmune disorders that have been totally healed by God. Well, let's start, let's start out here with a very common <laughs> autoimmune disease, and that is diabetes 1. Tell us what's happening in the body, and what have you seen over the years that would be causing the immune system to respond in this way, to attack um, that particular body part? Well, in, in all autoimmune disorders, something happens in the marrow in which something takes over the function of a white corpuscle, reprograms it, literally reprograms it to recognize the antigen marker. Everything in life, everything that's in your body has an antigen marker that the immune system is to recognize as a friend or a foe. And when the way God created us, things that are a foe, God created our immune system to recognize that as an invader mm -hmm. and destroy it. Literally go eat it until it's gone. So, so with this understanding, and uh, uh, we get into the immune system now recognizing that the... Uh, actually, in diabetes one, the the the, the um, pancreas, which is su supposed to, uh, you know, release the proper amount of insulin, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't. Now, diabetes one and diabetes two, there's some lot of confusion. Uh, diabetes two is a, not a, a disease at all, but unfortunately, we've thrown everything in. Diagnosis. It's all disease. Well, is there a difference between a disease, true organic disease, and a syndrome? In the case of diabetes 1, it is a true disease because the immune system is attacking the pancreatic islets of the pancreas and actually eating mm. and destroying the pancreatic islets that produce the insulin. So it's the pancreatic islets that have the antigen marker that these white corpuscles say, ah, bad, we go eat, dun, 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 dun. and so you don't have the proper amount of insulin. Mm -hmm. uh, diabetes 2, on the other hand, is that there is a mind-body connection disconnect in which the pancreatic islets that are there producing insulin don't produce them correctly or in the right amount. Mm -hmm. And so it's a syndrome where something is causing something. In diabetes 2, if what is triggering that uh, pancreas not to properly release insulin is dealt with, the pancreas is, 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 is fine. The pancreas is not diseased, it's just not functioning. Something's interfering with its function. So getting back to the question, mm -hmm. in diabetes 1, of course, we have the body attacking the body. Now, in the allergies, in the, in the autoimmune teaching that you're coming in the conference, and I don't want to give all that away, but I will say this, that in all autoimmune, when we did the research, mm -hmm. and it was astounding to find this, that in all autoimmune diseases, I'm not going to use the word disorders, I'm going to use the word disease, organic destruction. Mm -hmm. There is the organic destruction to the pancreatic islets that produce insulin. Now, that distinguishes the differences between that and non-bacterial inflammation. We have a congregation of white corpuscles interfering with function. So I want to make sure there's a distinction known here. What triggers what and what's causing this is highly spiritual. There is a kingdom that is able to access our biology, but needs our permission in our spirituality and our personality. 
You know, we've known for years the subject of the mind-body connection, but we've never understood spirit-soul-body connection. It's not mm -hmm. taught. Science doesn't teach it. In fact, science only believes what it can see. So it's never going to understand things that are able to give us thoughts that causes our body not to function correct. So in the understanding of autoimmune disorders, the body is, the person is actually allergic to themselves, David. That's and rather than being, mm. it's, well, I'm, I'm allergic, I'm allergic to, you know, uh, this, I'm allergic to that. And that could fall under, you know, traditional Ig mediated allergies. It could be psychogenic allergies. But in this case, the person is allergic to, the, that is an incredible thought, isn't mm -hmm. it? Am I really allergic to myself? And why am I allergic to myself? Well, in diabetes, one usually has its door point entrance in childhood. Not always but involves an atmosphere of existence, the, the, the environment, of not being accepted and loved. Put down. Sometimes children get, get uh, diabetes early because of a toxic environment in the family where a, a parent is, is not really kind to them. There's a lot of dysfunctional families. And so you have, you have a person have this feeling that there's something wrong with me. Mm. If not, why, did, why would I not be loved like? I mean, they struggle with that conflict. It's, it's, it's a horrible conflict. So that releases the body to attack the body because a person is being rejected by another, mm -hmm. so they reject themselves. Hmm. And, and positionally, they don't have the ability, and so there's a spirit of infirmity that comes. And, and, and you know, Jesus uh, in the Bible uh, first cast out a spirit of infirmity. One time when he, when, he, when he healed, he cast out a spirit of infirmity to go, and it left. And then he laid hands on that person and they were healed. That is a powerful scripture. Mm -hmm. I wish science could hear me talk right now. Because that indicates sometimes our diseases are caused by an evil spirit. And yes, I use the word evil spirit. Or should I just be more mature and call it spirit of infirmity? It's still an evil spirit. That, that tracks us in our personalities and our spirituality. And our bodies conform. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. A man, it's a, big, it's a big, you know, even in the field of epigenetics, David, science is now seeing that even, even thought, even can be inherited can cause a gene to express itself incorrectly. It's not genetically changed. Mm -hmm. There's no genetic code defect. It just doesn't do what it's supposed to do because thought has affected how it responds. That is the field of epigenetics. Mm, wow. I didn't realize it, but I've been teaching this for probably over 30 years. I think I have a doctorate in it. <laughs> now it's got a name, <laughs> well, epigenetics. And, uh, and we, but, we don't, but we don't look at thought. We look at the biology only. So, diabetes 1 is a, a very serious disease in which the white corpuscles actually attack the pancreatic islets and eat them. Um, it's very big. And oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, as you were saying, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. clarify what I heard. Um, they, they're going into a place of self-rejection because they've possibly been rejected not feeling accepted and loved and nurtured. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. And uh, there are so many, again, there's so many dysfunctional families. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, sometimes children get diabetes, one, when they're really small. It may not be. Some things are inherited. Even, even your allergies, uh, IgE-mediated allergies, mm -hmm. are all inherited. That means you can track them in family trees. So, it isn't that it's, 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 you're just allergic to this. It's your whole family generation. We call, it, we call that generational iniquity that's tracking. And it all involves thought. Wow. Well, let's, um, let's go on to another common autoimmune disease, and that's lupus. Lupus. Tell us a little bit about what you know about lupus. I know a lot about lupus, and I see many people healed of lupus. Mm -hmm. um, lupus, again, is autoimmune. The white corpuscles have decided that there's an antigen marker on the connective tissue of the organs. That's the primary lupus. So the connective tissue organs are the real enemy. 
not the pancreatic olives this time. It has to happen to be the connective tissue of organs. Well, the organs of our body is the, is the essence of who we are. Mm -hmm. our, our organs is, is the core of our biology. You have your mind, then you have your inner workings, and so all this has an expression. So, in this particular case, the inner workings, you, you know, have you ever, ever uh, sometimes been afraid of or, or somebody or whatever, and you, you, you felt inside something jump? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you felt something jump. It was like, oh, my heart's racing, or I felt it jump. Well, that's how your organs are so easily affected by so many things. A lupus happens to be an interesting door point because its primary trigger point is guilt. Hmm. Um, I had, uh, I had uh, a lady years ago that had really extreme uh, lupus, but she also had multiple miscarriages for 10 years. Hmm. 10 children, two sets of twins, what do you think? You think she had some guilt? And along with the profile, now, and this is a great testimony because the person was totally healed of lupus. And coming through that release of guilt from all that, the person became pregnant, had their first child, mm. coming out of our ministry. That's a powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. Ten miscarriages, yeah. including two oh, sets wow. of twins. Wow. And all that was dealt with when one issue was dealt with called guilt. Not only, not only was the womb released to have a child because it was happening in utero, the white corpuscles were doing two things. The white corpuscles were doing two things. They were doing the eating part and they were doing the white corpuscle convention where they gather, producing mm -hmm. inflammation. And so what was happening in, in, the, in the lupus, they were coming eating, eating the connective tissue organs, which is very painful. But over here, what was happening and causing the miscarriages is that guilt was, was releasing autoimmune activity from the mother against the child, in which the white corpuscles are congregating on the umbilical cord, producing non-bacterial inflammation, and the umbilical cord would, because of inflammation, would squeeze shut and the child would be asphyxiated in utero, mm -hmm. second trimester. This was a tremendous learning curve for me because we got, a, we got a healing of lupus and we got a release for having a child. Wow. Now, this opens up a big conversation, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Guilt is a powerful... See, she, she had the foundation of guilt. I mean, the whole package is right here. And we want them to lose children, but then as she's personally being attacked, mm. it was all because of guilt. Wow. And so when she, when she was released from the guilt, was able to forgive herself, understand the works of how, you know, the Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. We're able to show her from our study of the word and science and all that we do and all that we know, how the enemy was killing her children. Show her right down to biology could show it right down to spirituality and personality. She got saved. She got converted. She got changed. She had a complete personality change. And out of that came more life, and out of that came a healing. Wow. That's awesome. I think it's awesome.